Hello, it's me. Ro, not Adele, clearly. Welcome to a video that you have been waiting for a long time. I wanted to talk about my Hoya Grow Walls, a topic that I have been asked about multiple times in the comments. And currently, I think you can only see parts of two walls out of three that I have. So they are right, that's a, wait, how does this mirrored image thing work? So there's, there's one there. And then the other one is just here. And the other one is behind you. But, you know, not, not actually, don't check behind you, it's behind the camera. So I have three Hoya walls in total, and also I have utilized the sides of my grow tents as Hoya walls. So we will talk about all of those today, some tips and some things that I have noticed over time. I also have kind of a Hoya wall in one of my Mel's book cabinets. Actually, that was the entire setup if you look at the past videos. We will discuss all of these things, the pros and the cons, and hopefully I can help you find more space in your home where you can put Hoya because that is the ultimate goal of this video and this channel for you to have more Hoyas. I think I think you figured that out early on. The first Hoya wall that I made was the one right behind me. After I made it I just realized I need to have as many Hoya walls as possible and I am happy to say that I have even inspired some other people like my friend Betsy to make her giant Hoya wall which is better than mine so... I mean, really, I, I, I inspire you and you just decide to outdo your teacher? Outrageous. So the wall in the back is actually one of the smaller Hoya walls. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a video showing you how to set it up, but let me just tell you, it is very simple and the pegboard that I used does come with the instructions and you only need to put two holes in the wall. So it's very easy. The Hoya wall behind me and the one behind the camera is actually made from Skadis Ikea pegboard. This is a somewhat affordable solution. I do have a more affordable solution that we will talk about a little bit later. It is the big wall behind me, but that is also kind of specific because I'm not really sure that the item I used for that wall is available everywhere. Everywhere, but maybe it is so we will talk about it but this ikea scotty spec board is something that indeed is available to i think everyone because i think ikea has finally managed to spread all across the world so if you have access to ikea you do have access to Scotty's pegboards. Now the pegboard is not the biggest investment, actually. It's one of the cheaper investments. I think it's about 15 euros for the size that I have. The pegboard that I chose is the one that works for me the best because I do have two kind of pillars and it had to go in between those. They're not actual pillars, but I'm not gonna look up the word in English because it doesn't matter. So it is 56 by 56 centimeters, but there are three sizes of this pegboard. I think one is around 30 and one is around 70. I could be wrong, but you will see on the IKEA website. The height is always the same, only the length or the width of the pegboard will change. The pegboard will come with metal pieces and you screw in these metal pieces into your wall and then you screw the pegboard into these metal pieces. And I can tell you it is very sturdy. I was not sure in the beginning that it will be able to hold pods, but I was easily able to get up to 10 pods on that pegboard. Of course, it depends on the size of the pods and size of the plants. Currently, I would say I have about five pods on them, but they're also not entirely full, but I'm kinda in between setups here and figuring out setups, so the, the pegboards will definitely get filled up. The true investment when it comes to this pegboard system from IKEA are the IKEA Scotty clips. In my opinion, the clips are fairly expensive. They cost 3 euros or 350 US dollars for two clips. And if you want to get 10 of them, if you want to get 10 pots, you will have to buy five packages of these clips. That is about 15 euros for the clips, plus the cost of the pegboard, that is around 30 euros. Not extremely cheap, not the most expensive thing either, but it depends also how big you want to go, if you want to do two, if you want to do something like Betsy, where she used four, pegboards, then you will be needing a lot of clips for that. I do have to say that these clips are very useful. I have used them in many, many setups. I have used them on the pegboards, in my grow tent. I have used them even on this bigger wall here. 
super useful and sometimes they are discounted to something that which I find acceptable which is two euros for two clips. We need that to be a standard price IKEA. Listen to me, I am great at business. Those clips are specific to the board. I don't think you will find a replacement somewhere else. What you can do is you can probably hack this if you are good at hacks. I am medium good-ish, lower than medium, you know. I'm not the worst, but I'm not the best at DIY things. It depends on the day. On a good day, I am fantastic at DIY. But how many good days do we really have? <laughs> Ooh, that was my bones cracking from the old age. <laughs> Despite the cost, it is a system that I really like. I use it in my Millsville cabinet. I have something similar in my Rodsta cabinet. And again, I have two walls. I think it's also very easy to make these pegboards at home. I do not have power tools. I only have like a drill and a sanding thing. I don't, words like what, power tool, I, you know. The sander. If you live in Europe, you most likely do not have the power tools necessary. I, for some reason, whenever I watch DIY channels, and this is, by the way, a digression, I always see that uh, in the States, people have so many power tools, they just have a table saw laying around in their, in their garage, and I'm like, how? <laughs> I don't know, maybe in the rest of the Europe people have this, but here in Serbia that's definitely not the case. You're not just gonna walk into your garage and find all the necessary tools. Anyways, I think it would be something that is not too difficult to make, and then if you find clips that are similar to the IKEA ones, you can probably tailor your pegboard to that. What my friend Alex did, he 3D prints these small pots that everyone keeps asking about in the videos, and he made holders for the pegboards. Now, he will most likely write to you in the comments that they're not a perfect fit, but I used up all of them, not necessarily for the pegboards, because that is a tight fit, but I did use them in my wall in the tent, but, you know, just something to inspire you if you have a 3D printer, and I know from the comments that some of you do, you can probably even print something for this pegboard that will be potentially cheaper than those clips. Now, the way to attach the pot to the clip. Betsy had some issues with this. She could not find the glue that would actually hold the clip and the pot. I do have a lot of the pots not really attached with glue. I just kind of put the clip there and put it on the wall. It's not the safest and I'm waiting for the day when they will fall. But also, like, I don't water my plants all that much, so I, don't, I think it's a pretty low risk. I used a glue that I will show to you, so if you have access to this glue, it works really well. It does take 24 hours to dry, so quite a long time but after that it's basically almost like cement so it is very very heavy duty glue unfortunately what this means is that clip will most likely permanently stay attached to that pot now the pots that i use again they are very specific to serbia it is a company based here so they don't ship outside of serbia but they're similar to alho pots and that is what Betsy used you can use any pot that you would like. I do think that rectangular pots would be very nice because my friend's pots, they are rectangular and they fit really, really well. You know, the round pots, they're okay. The cylindrical ones, it will fit, it will be okay, but I just think there is something unholy <laughs> by putting a cylindrical pot up against like a flat surface, I don't know. It's a weird me thing. I would just prefer them to be uh, rectangular. Some things to consider when making these walls is you need to place them near a window. Mine are next to the window, but I do not rely much on my windows because we know they are northwest facing windows. I do rely on my grow lights. So there is one grow light here and also like on the opposite side, 100 watt Mars Hydro grow light that I did purchase myself and I did not purchase them specifically for the walls but I do have like a <laughs> row of hanging plants right here going above my head so I actually purchased them for that and they are doing a really good job. There is also a very big light in front of or actually on, on the ceiling but lighting this wall and it is doing really good job at that. Also for my grow tents because I did utilize the walls of the grow tents which is something that people ask me a lot about. That light is good enough to also provide sufficient light or sometimes even too much light for the walls of the grow tents. 
However, if your room is really well lit, no issue, you do not have to use a grow light, you can just rely on the natural sun and that will be completely fine. You can use a different type of light, you can use some spotlights, I think those would look very nice. Betsy has used spotlights on her grow wall and they look really, really good. So you can kind of figure out that situation for yourself, it's not too difficult to light it. Um, again, I think maybe spotlights are most... Um, design friendly solutions because this is kind of a design solution. I do think it looks very very nice and it's like a very cheap alternative to actually having a living wall. Plus you get to shift things around so that is very cool as well. Now one thing that is kind of important and this is important for me because I didn't really figure this out right away if that makes sense is I used a lot of uh, small pots for the walls and plants grew really well and they very quickly outgrew those pots. So that is kind of an issue for me because, well, now I have to repot those plants, put them in bigger pots, you know, buy more clips, glue them to the pots. So you kind of get the complication and then I will have a bunch of small pots with clips. So I would just tell you to kind of carefully select what you want to put on those walls. Think about some plants that could stay in pots for the longer time. I think that Lacunosas work really well, Hoya Thomsoni, Hoya Lee, all of those were on my walls, Hoya Kanya Kumariana, David Kumingi, Heusch Keliana, all of those look really well. Kentiana, Bella, and I put those now in 12 centimeter pots and that is like their final pot size. They will just have to accept that, that there is no going up because also I think that something bigger than a 12 centimeter pot would not look that great. So it's not really for big pots, it, it would look terrifying. Not that it doesn't <laughs> sometimes look terrifying like this, but you know, choose pots that are maybe 10 or 12 centimeters for the wall. You can also do smaller, smaller pots are fine. Ikea does have this tray that you can also attach to the wall and they, I think they also have kind of small cup-like things so you can use those as cover pots. But the tray th thing, you can put three plants or a couple of plants on that as well and then you don't have to glue anything in. It really fits well in, onto the wall but you just have to choose the appropriate pot to go with that. Another thing to consider with potting your plants is don't be Miro and do not put soil almost to the top of the pot. I, do, I don't know why I do this. It's a thing that I don't know why I do. Make sure to leave enough room because no matter what you do, the pot will eventually tilt a little bit and then when you water, it will spill over very easily. So make sure there is some room there from the edge of the pot to the top of your soil line. I would do like two fingers, one finger, two, two fingers. It's a weird thing anyways, because there is enough space there that when you water, the water doesn't really just flow right over. It can kind of sit there a bit and slowly go down. So that is really all about the IKEA wall hack. Very simple. Betsy does have a more elaborate video. I did try to record a more elaborate video, but it didn't work out. The angles were terrible. I'm way too tall. The camera does not reach my height. It's a, it's a whole situation, so that didn't really work out. So when it comes to this bigger wall, it is a more flexible solution in a sense that I didn't use the IKEA pegboard thing, but I did find this metal wire. Now this is something that is used here in the shops, in boutiques, and sometimes it's used like a display thing for the shoes or sometimes for like basketballs. I actually do have a, a part of this thing that I, I don't even know how to call it. It's an additional piece that is actually a holder for balls, basketballs or footballs or, you know, sport stuff thing. Now, it does not have to be specifically this. You do not have to buy the exact same thing, but I do think there are a lot of things that look similar to that that you can find online. I have seen metal steel mesh things and people use them a lot in design to kind of organize their working space. So this is really where I got the idea because I saw a lot of these metal wireframe thingies 
uh, on Pinterest, on YouTube, on Instagram, and people use them as organizers. So I think you can easily get those. And of course, people in the plant community have been using them for a while. This is not like the most original idea ever. Nothing is, right? I think something like this will be easy to find. And what I did for mine, mine did come with holders, but uh, because I was excellent at drilling, <laughs> it did not really, I didn't do a great job, okay? So what I did instead, I kind of put four screws and a kind of hang this thing like a painting and I secured it with zip ties. It seems to hold well. I did put like 30 Hoyas on there. Nothing fell so far and it's been a couple of months at this point. So I guess it's safe. I don't know. But it's very easy to put these up. Again, you can just have nails or longer screws that will go into your wall and you kind of let them out a bit, right? So you can hang the mesh wire on those. The good thing about this other system is that you have more freedom to kind of uh, find the solution on how to hang the pots. I have two solutions. First one is, of course, with the IKEA clips because they really fit on any mesh. Again, in the tent, on that wall, they fit really well. But the second solution is I just melted two holes in my cover pots and I put some wire that I also used to make trellises from. So you can buy this wire in any hardware store, I believe and you can make hooks for your pots. You can probably make them even prettier than I did, but I just, you know, I was actually doing this for my grow tent. For that, I was trying to find a solution and somehow, you know, it worked out for this pegboard as well. It's not really a pegboard, but let's just call it that for simplicity. It is much easier to do and I think it is cheaper as well. I think I only had to pay maybe 20 euros for one of these still frame things and essentially you know i didn't i don't know how much the wire was but it was very cheap to buy the wire and i could make unlimited amount of pots if if, if i had the dedication <laughs> now perhaps the downside is that this may not look as aesthetically pleasing but that is simply because i kind of had this on hand i bought it for my millsbo cabinet so it was first there and then when I was rearranging the cabinet, it was just a leftover thing. And the second part of that, because it's like two mesh wire thingies, the second one is from my friend. So it was really a cheap solution. It was mostly repurposing things that I already had. That is also why you kind of see there is some difference in the sizes of these mesh steel frame thingies. That's that's why they look different, but I, it doesn't really bother me. But I think that overall this is potentially a more durable solution because the IKEA pack boards are pressed paper from what I understand. So I think maybe, you know, over time they will deteriorate. I actually do see some of mine deteriorating just by taking the pots on and off and, you know, I, I see that I damage the little whole things on the pegboard. So this metal thing is going to be a bit more durable. I think it's more resilient also to higher humidity if you're working with higher humidity. For example, for my grow tents, it's kind of a similar thing. I don't have the exact same mesh thing because it would be very expensive. So I chose the cheaper option, which is using the rabbit fence. So I zip tied it to this frame, to the steel frame of my tent, and I am putting Hoyas all around the wall of my grow tent, even baskets. When it comes to challenges with this other grow wall, I don't think there are any. I think, you know, the same thing applies. You kind of have to be careful how you pot your plants, but that's about it. There aren't really any challenges. You don't have to buy specific clips. You can find many, many solutions. And the same with my grow tent. You can find many solutions to hang plants or to put plants on the wall in there. The only thing that I would say is a challenge with my grow tent is that Hoyas grow really fast. So they are kind of going to go around the mesh they're gonna grow into that. Now you may ask yourself, what are the benefits? Why would I do this? Well, the benefit to me is that you can make different arrangements pretty frequently. You can put different Hoyas, you can change their positions, you can put more variegated plants in, you can do an entirely green wall. So it's kind of cool to play around with that and see what you will get and what you will like. I am always playing with my grow walls, which does sound strange but it's like it's it's a thing it, it's just very very easy to kind of get into this thing and spend like half of the day 
playing around with it and seeing what combination you can come up with. It's also kind of like something dynamic in your space. I mean, plants do grow and they, they change over time, but again, because you can move plants around, you can change the look of the wall very frequently. You can put different plants. It doesn't have to be Hoyas, you can put something else. I mean, I'm not suggesting this because I think Hoyas are the best plants. So if you want to do that, do it. But this is like really a cheap, cheap solution to make yourself a grow wall that will be fun and, and something that is just a nice addition to your space. Plus another beneficial thing for, for this is that it really does save space. Again, I have 30 Hoyas in this grow wall and they're not taking up any shelf space, any window space. They're not hanging. They're just on the walls. Like, we do have walls in our homes, people. We can put plants on the walls. Forget about the paintings and other stuff. Like, forget about that. Put pegboards so you can have grow walls because they look very, very cool. I do fully intend to make a video of me kind of rearranging my grow walls because that is something that I need to do. They're kind of in unfinished state. I mean, that one is pretty much complete. I think it looks cool. I think, you know, plants still need to grow a bit more to kind of make it full. That actually happened with the grow wall. That's why the reason why it's empty. It, the plants really grew well and they became so big that I had to just take some of them down. So it's not necessarily a forever solution, but you can also always trim your Hoyas. That's completely fine as well. And you can maintain the wall indefinitely like that. That is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed taking a look at my grow walls. Again, I will make a video in the future kind of rearranging my grow walls. So make sure to subscribe so you can see that video. And I want to hear from you. What do you think about grow walls done in this way? Is this something that you would like to do? Is this something that you don't want to do? I would really like to hear your opinions. I think this is something that is very nice. I think it makes the space look nice. It is interactive. It is dynamic. I mean, did I in the past ask my friends who came over to kind of arrange the horse on my wall? Yes, I did. And they did enjoy it. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, Han C, Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy Begonia, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geisig, Go Green Tropical, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Jana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Koo, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Leplan de Steff, Mandy Milliken, Mars B, Martina Alif Day, Marty Miller, Mel Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Naily Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Rachel Clad Conway, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zeely May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, The Swedish Hoya Noob, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokob Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Anna K, Brana Phillips, Kelone, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Liz Martinez, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Druid, Plantelania, Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Riakul. Also, a thank you to my $1 patrons Brandon Pacheco, Kerry Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Lauren M., Lori Ann Subramaniam, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chen Mueller, and Paula Plans. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you're having a great time during the holidays. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon.